And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Today we're taking a look at Cartographers, a role player tale. Now, Cartographers is from Thunderworks Games, who's made a very popular uh, dice manipulation style game called Role Player. It's a game in which you build the stats of a character who's going to go on to, into an RPG campaign. So in that same universe, they now made a flip and write game, or roll and write game. You're flipping cards and drawing tetris style shapes onto a piece of paper, trying to make a map. That's the name Cartographers. It's set that same universe-ish. There's some bad guys. The theme isn't you know extremely strong, but what have you. You are trying to score points by building a nice map. App. Here's how it plays. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to get a sheet here that's going to show your board. Uh, there's two different sides, so everyone's going to play on the same sheet. You just choose your either you're going to play side A or B. You're also going to have some scoring cards. There's many different scoring cards that are included with the game. They have different backs on them, so you're going to choose one of each type of back and then randomly place them underneath scoring A, B, C, and D. The game's going to take place over four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. And after spring, cards A and B will be scored, then B and C in summer, C and D in fall, and D and A in winter, which means each scoring card is going to happen twice. The scoring cards are going to give you points for various types of terrain and where they might be. So, for example, if water is next to a farm space, you get a victory point, and you also get, a, which is called reputation, and you also get a reputation for each farm space that's next to water. So you want water and farm to be next to each other, adjacent to each other, for this scoring card. While this one here says you get two points, reputation points for each village space in the second largest cluster of village spaces. So as the game goes by, you can put different terrain squares on the map. If there's a whole pile together, that's considered a cluster here. So you, the big cluster you get, the more points you'll get from that one. And each of these will have various ways to score. A deck here is going to be shuffled that has a whole pile of different kinds of cards in it. And you're going to be shuffling these four cards here that have monsters on them, and they're called ambush cards, and putting one in the deck. Each season, another one will be added so that it's possible that once one of these comes up, it's discarded, but it's possible that you'll see all four over the course of the game, and a very small chance that you might see none of them. So each round you turn over the top card. If it's a Temple Ruins card, you turn over another card. Most cards will show you one or two types of terrain. So this shows a shape here and I need to draw this shape on my board somewhere and then fill it with one of these two types of terrain. I can rotate and or flip this as much as I want. Here for example is another shape with two different types of terrain. Another shape with two different types of terrain. Another type of terrain, two different shapes. If I choose this shape, the smaller shape, I also will cross off a coin on my sheet. This space here, the rift cards, the rift lands, is only a single square, but I can use any of the different terrains to fill it. And that's what most of these are. Now, if an outpost card has been drawn, or more than one, before the terrain, then that means your terrain must cover an outpost spot on the board. So there's outposts here. You cannot ever cover mountains, and you can never go off the, the board itself. If you cannot draw the shape, or you can't cover an outpost, and you're supposed to, then you can simply draw a single square anywhere on the board. If you completely surround all four spaces surrounding a mountain, then you get to color in another coin. Now, as you draw these cards, there's going to be numbers on them, and you're just going to kind of stack the cards together like this. When that number meets or exceeds the number on the card here for the season, that's the end of the season. At that point, you score. There are four things that you're going to be scoring. Uh, the two cards, A and B, those are two of the things. You get a point for every coin that you've crossed off. And then you lose a point for each monster space on your board that you don't haven't surrounded with other things. See, when one of the ambush cards comes up, you pass your sheet to somebody else, clockwise or counterclockwise, and they draw this shape on your board. That's going to be minus one for each adjacent square, so you're going to want to surround these with other things. They can also mess you up and try to put it in a negative space for you. 
And at the end of the game, after four scorings, after four seasons, whoever has the most points is the winner. Here's an example of a final board that's filled in with different types of terrain. You can see coins here, how many points they got each of the different seasons for a final score of 53. And if you want to, you can also play uh, a solo mode where there's different ways to score and different things are going to happen. You're just trying to get the best score you can. For a roll and write game, or a flip and write game, I guess, there's actually quite a few components. There's a lot of scorecards, and the scorecards aren't always totally easy to figure out what they do, but I do appreciate the book comes and it just explains each of the scoring cards at the end. The rules themselves are pretty easy. The terrain types themselves are fairly easy to draw, but it's, it is funny to me to see the different interpretations. So here, for example, you can see how some people drew trees that look like this, and the houses we drew to look like that. And it, as long as I think you know what everything is, it works out okay. And they're not that hard to draw, but there is a lot of drawing going on. The game comes with some okay pencils, but as with all of these types of games, I'm going to laminate them and use markers. But I will say that if you don't want to do that, you definitely have a ton of sheets that comes with the game. The game also comes with a card for role player. Uh, so if you want to use a cartographer in that game, don't worry, you're not missing out in role player if you never get this card. But hey, I like more cards. So once again, Thunderworks just puts out great game after great game. Um, now, the roll and write or the flip and write genre is not necessarily one of my favorites. I like them. I don't necessarily go gaga over them like many others do. And there certainly is a lot of them out there. We're talking maybe 60 to 100 different ones have been released in the last two years. That's a very crowded genre. This is definitely one of the best ones that I've found so far. It's also one of the most involved ones. So the reasons I like it are thus. I like the whole draw a map and fill it in with terrain. That's neat. I like the tetris shape thing now. That subgenre of these games is even pretty crowded with lots of different tetris shapes. Here though, you're making, putting them down and forming land areas, so it feels a little bit more thematic. Like I said, the theme's not very strong, but for most of these games, there's no theme at all, so at least some theme is better than none. The monsters, I think people will have a mixed feeling on. It's not really, these kind of games you're sitting there like, look at this, ooh, this shape fits perfectly in here, and then it's like, give me your sheet. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I've messed it up. I suppose you could play without them, but it, I, I think they're good to be in there because it, what it, it does is it stops everybody from following a perfect setup and it gives you a threat to go against, but it's not overwhelming. You're not going to score negative points in this game. You might lose points if you don't cover, you surround the monsters, but it's not going to, it's not a, a thing where I'm like, oh no, monsters again. It's more like, oh, monsters, what an annoyance. So that's a neat idea though. It's not the first time I've seen it done in one of these games, but it, it's not done very often in them. So the four different ways of scoring and how you have two, the first A scoring, for example, happens in spring, but it's also gonna happen again in winter. So you're setting things up for the end and you also gotta figure out what stuff's gonna score when, is this gonna score again? Should I surround the mountains to get those coins? Because really the coin is a single point every time. And if as many coins as you can get in spring, are essentially going to score you four points each because they'll score at the end of every season. And then there's two different sides to the board, which is nice. It's it just There's just a lot of good stuff in cartographers all around. Like I said, it's a little more involved than most of these style games, but it's one that works really well, and I think people are going to enjoy it, and it has a little bit of theme in it, cartographers. Dice Tower Judgment approved! Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.